All right, this video is going to be on solving polynomial equations and specifically by factoring. So now that you've watched all the videos on the factoring methods, I'm going to focus more on the solving end. Okay, so find the real number solutions. So in other words, we want to solve this, right? But those directions, make sure you understand those. So first and foremost, I can divide everything by 2. So I'll have x to the fifth plus 12x equals 7x cubed. And then I'm going to get everything to one side. So I will have x to the fifth minus 7x cubed plus 12x equals 0. Now I, oops, I forgot the x. I'm going to stop here and first be able to write 12x. Goodness sakes. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. And you might say, well, why couldn't I just divide everything by x? Well, you can divide everything by x, but when it's a constant, you can get rid of that constant as long as everything is divisible by it. But when it's just an x, you cannot just get rid of an x because that's like getting rid of a solution. And that would be just so sinful. So don't do that. However, I can factor out an x, which I should do because that will make my life much easier. So I'm going to go there next, and then I'll note, hey, that's looking just like a quadratic equation, except instead of x squared, it's x to the fourth. Whoopee! So I'm going to factor that down. Factors of 12 that add up to 7, so that would be x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 3. And then my x squared minus 4, I can factor down even further to x plus 2 and x minus 2. But x squared minus 3, I can't factor down any further because 3 is not a perfect square. So everything is factored, and now I am ready to find all the solutions. So everything with an x has to be set equal to 0. So this x is going to equal 0. This x plus 2 is going to equal 0. x minus 2 is going to equal 0. And x squared minus 3 is going to equal 0. Okay, so I'm solving all of these. Well, oops, the first one is um, pretty obvious, right? x equals 0. The second one, still pretty obvious, x is going to equal negative 2. This one's pretty obvious, x is going to equal positive 2. Here, I'm going to do x squared equals 3, and then I'm going to square root both sides. So I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of 3. And how many solutions do you have all together? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and if you go back to the beginning here, I'm going to overlap, but I see I have a fifth degree function. Hence, I should have five solutions. So if you don't, you know you left something out. This one I'm going to go through kind of quickly because it seems to kind of get everybody in trouble, but you can take out an x first, and if you don't catch that, um, you just kind of get stuck because it's not a perfect cube. I mean, the first one's a perfect cube, but 4 is not a perfect cube. So you're just like, what do I do? Um, and then, of course, x squared minus 4 factors down to x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then you can take every x and set it equal to 0 and solve. So that one's solved for x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. Okay, here we go with a good old cubic. So I know that x is cubed and 27 is 3 cubed. So this is x cubed minus 3 cubed. So I use the um, difference of cubes equations, which is going to be a minus b and a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So my a is really x. So I just kind of substitute all this in. So my a is really x and my b is really 3 a squared would be x squared, a times b would be 3x, and b squared would be 3 squared, so that's 9. And then I'm setting that equal to 0. Okay, now my quadratic piece doesn't factor down any further, okay? So I know, however, x minus 3 equals 0, so that's going to just be 3. That's the easy one. But because this quadratic doesn't factor down, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So here we go, or complete the square. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So that will be 9 minus 36 would be negative 
27 all over 2. And then um, that's going to be imaginary. Okay, so I'm going to take out an I, but 27 is 9 times 3, so that's going to be 3 square root of 3, 3I three square root of 3, all over 2. And then the 2 does not divide into either of those 3's, so I can't simplify anything, so there are my other two solutions. So it was a cubic equation. I have 1, 2, 3 solutions, and I'm done. Okay, the last video is talking about an optical company, and they're going to make a glass prism that has a volume of 15 cubic centimeters. Um, the height should be H centimeters, and the base will be a right triangle with leg lengths of H minus 2 and H minus 3 centimeters. What will the height be? Well, we know we have a right uh, triangular prism, specifically a right triangle, and I really am kind of a lousy three-dimensional drawer, so I'll just kind of sketch in a right triangle here. And we know that the leg, legs are h minus 2 and h minus 3. And then, of course, if you envision this prism, you know that that height is going to be h. So make sure that that picture kind of makes sense. Envision that that's in three dimensions, however. Um, oh. Scribble out this. Okay, so what will the height be? So over here, after the side, I have that the volume of, or excuse me, volume, yes. I have lots of mistakes. The volume of a triangular prism is area of the base times the lateral length. So capital B is area of the base, if you recall from geometry, and that should be easy because the base is a triangle. And then the lateral length, of course, is what connects each base to e each other, which will be H. So volume is going to be area of my base, which is a triangle. So area of a triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. And then all of that is times the lateral length, which is h. So here's my kind of initial setup. And then I also know that my volume is 15 cubic centimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and put 15 in, and I'm going to do a little simplifying as I go. So I'm going to FOIL this first. So I get h squared um, minus 2h minus 3h will be minus 5h, if that's okay. Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. And then I have a times h here. I'm just going to put that over here, if that's okay. Since I'm multiplying, that's order of operations is fine. Um, then I'm going to distribute that h through. So I'll have h cubed minus 5h squared plus 6h. And then rather than distributing that 1 half through, I'm actually going to multiply the, by both sides by 2 so that I can get rid of that fraction because all of these pieces are not divisible by 2 and I don't want fractions. And that's just me personally. You certainly could cut everything in half. So now I have everything in standard form, and I'm ready to get everything to one side. So I'll subtract my 30 over. And notice I have a cubic function. However, it has four terms. And if you recall, anytime you have four terms, it might group. So let's hope that I could factor this by grouping. So I'm going to try. I'll take out an h squared from the first parentheses, which will leave me with h minus 5. And I can take out a positive 6 from the second grouping, which will leave me with h minus 5. And sure enough, it worked out. So this binomial is identical. So I will factor the binomial of h minus 5 out, which will leave me with h squared plus 6. And then I'm ready to solve. So I'm going to take each factor and set it equal to 0. And I will get 5 centimeters. And here, um, when I square root a negative, that's going to be imaginary. So that's not going to be applicable to my problem. Hence, my height is 5 centimeters. Um, if it asks for other dimensions, you could go back up here, and you would know that the base, the legs of the base of your triangular prism would be 5 minus 3, so 2, and 5 minus 2, so 3. So two and three, and of course, it just asks for the height, so we're done. <laughs>